Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Chapter 23 Gauss Law Fundamentals of Physics by Hilary Resnick Walker, problem number 29. Let me read out the problem. Uh, figure is a section, okay, this is the figure. Figure is a section of a conducting rod of radius r1 equal to 1.3 millimeters. So, this is a rod, radius r1, which is uh, 1.3 millimeters. So, it is a very thin rod and uh, length l equal to 11 meters. So, length is very large in comparison to the radius, okay, in comparison to the radius. Uh, inside a thin walled coaxial uh, conducting cylindrical shell, so we have a conducting cylindrical shell, okay, conducting cylindrical shell of radius r2, r2 is 10 times r1 and length is same 11 meters, okay, length is same 11 meters. So, figure is a section of a conducting rod of radius r1 equal 1.3 uh, millimeters and length L equal to 11 meters inside a thin walled coaxial conducting cylindrical shell of radius R2 equal to 10 times R1 and the same length. The net charge of the rod is Q1. So, charge of the rod is Q1 uh, which is plus 3.40 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb. This is total charge of the rod. Okay, Total charge of the rod. Uh, then if we have to find out lambda charge per unit length, lambda 1 is equal to Q1 divided by 11 meters because 11 meters is its length. That on the shell is Q2 equal to minus twice Q1. Charge of this outer shell, charge of this outer shell is minus twice Q1. Okay, minus twice Q1. So double of this but negative sign. Okay. What are the magnitude and direction of the electric field at a radial distance r equal to twice r2? Twice r2 is somewhere here, twice r2. So, outside the uh, cylindrical shell. Uh, what are, again, electric field and direction at r equal 5 times r1, 5 times Five times R1, yes, 5 times R1. 5 times R1 is, again, since r2 is... Uh, R2 is 10 times R1, so it's somewhere in between, okay, somewhere in between, 5 times. Uh, what is the charge on the interior and exterior surfaces of the shell? So, we had to find out four things here. One is we had to find out field outside, both of them. Second one, we had to find out field in between them at a given distance. Then third, we had to find our charge on the inner surface of this cylindrical shell. And fourth, we had to find our charge on the outer surface of this cylindrical shell. So, I have uh, redrawn this diagram here. So, this is a bit exaggerated view. This is the rod, the central rod of radius R1 surrounded by a coaxial uh, conducting uh, shell, cylindrical shell of radius R2. Now, uh, let me first highlight some results which we are going to use here. Field due to field due to a charge line charge. Okay, field due to a line charge with some line charge density lambda. We have been talking about it uh, in many sessions now. So E is equal to lambda divided by two pi epsilon zero r. Okay, lambda divided by two pi epsilon zero r. If this is a thick uh, uh, rod. this is a thick rod, then field outside the rod is same. It behaves like a line charge along its axis. If in a sense, it is a cylindrical shell, cylindrical shell, then for points inside it, field is zero. And for points lying outside it, it again behaves like a line charge along its axis. So lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r. Okay, so uh, if we're inside a cylindrical shell, then field is zero. If we're outside the cylindrical shell, then the same result, it behaves like a line charge along its axis. So these are the results we will be using. We have been using these results for a number of uh, sessions now, number of problems now. Now, uh, let's move on here. So the first thing we have to find out is, uh, first thing we have to find out is, uh, Electric field and direction of the field at r equal to twice r2. Okay, r equal to twice r2. So, twice r2 is, let's suppose, somewhere here. r equal to twice r2. 
Note that it is lying outside both of them. So both of them will behave like line charges along their common axis. Okay, along their common axis. So if this rod is having a line charge density of uh, lambda rod and the cylinder is having a line charge density of uh, lambda cylinder, then total line charge density along the axis will be sum of the two because both of them are behaving like line charges along their common axis. Okay, rod, this point, the point under consideration is outside the rod. So rod behaves like a line charge along its axis. So we have line charge density of lambda rod along the axis. Then this point is outside the cylinder also. So this cylinder, cylindrical shell will also behave like a line charge along its axis. So we'll have an additional lambda cylinder along the axis. So total line charge along the axis will be lambda rod plus lambda cylinder. And field will be because of the sum of the two at this point. Okay, because of the sum of the two at this point. So uh, field at that point is equal to instead of lambda, we'll write lambda rod plus lambda slender divided by two pi epsilon zero r. Okay, two pi epsilon zero r. Now uh, we can also write it this way uh, twice lambda rod plus lambda slender divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r. Now 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 r is 9 into 10 to the power 9 divided by r is uh, twice r2 and r2 is how much is r2? r2 is 10 times r1 so that means 13 millimeters okay so r2 is 13 millimeters r2 is 30 millimeters we are using twice r2 so 13 uh, into 2 is 26 26 millimeters so into 10 to the power minus 3 i'll be using everything in si system so 26 millimeters so i'm converting that to meters 10 to the power minus 3 then this 2 is there the lambda rod we have charge of the rod as uh, uh, q1 which is plus 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 12. So plus 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 12. This is total charge of the rod. But we have a charge per unit length. So divided by its length, which is 11 meters. That's already an SI system. Both of them already in SI system. Then plus lambda slender. Lambda slender is uh, minus twice q1 so minus twice q1 q1 is again the same thing 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 12 divided by the length which is 11 this is the total charge of the cylinder divided by the length will give you lambda lambda for the cylinder so this is what we have to work out to find out the field so field comes out to be uh, i've already worked it out field comes out to be minus 0 0.214 minus 0 0.214 newton per coulomb newton per coulomb what does this minus sign signify minus sign simply tells you that field is readily inward if we have a positively charged rod field is readily outward for a negatively negatively charged rod field is readily inward now this time we have this rod is positively charged and the slender is negatively charged so negative sign here implies that field is radially inward. So magnitude of the field is 0 0.214 Newton per coulomb and radially inward. Okay, radially inward. So uh, let me write that here. So field at this uh, twice R2 is equal to 0 0.214 Newton per coulomb radially inward. Okay, radially inward. So this is part uh, A. Then the next thing we have to find out is field at a distance of 5 times R1. At a distance of 5 times R1. So little r is equal to 5 times R1. So that is somewhere here. 5 times R1. Remember R2 is 10 times R1. So this is somewhere in between. Now at this point uh, field due to the cylinder will be 0. Because the point is lying inside the cylinder. So field due to the cylinder will be zero. Okay, so field at this point will be only because of the rod. And we already know the formula we have to use. So e is equal lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r. I'll use twice lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 r is 9 into 10 to the power 9 into 
2 into lambda for the rod, only for the rod. Cylinder will not contribute anything to the field here because the point is lying inside the cylinder. So, uh, lambda for the rod is again 3.14 is the total charge. 3.14 in 3.4, 3.4, 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 12 divided by length is the 11, uh, 11 meters. So, total charge divided by the length gives you lambda. Then divided by this R, R is 5 times R1 with R1 1.3 millimeters. So, 5 into 1.3 millimeters, I am converting that to meters, 10 to the power minus 3. So, this is what we have to work out. I have already done that. Uh, the field comes out to be 0 0.86 Newton per Coulomb, 0 0.86 Newton per Coulomb and is readily outward readily outward positive sign tells us that it is readily outward or the rod is positively charged so the field is readily outward because this negatively charged cylinder does not contribute anything so field is only because of the rod which is positively charged so it has to be readily outward now we have to find out uh, charge on the inner surface of the cylindrical shell and charge on the outer surface of the cylindrical shell so let's move on now, for that, I am considering a Gaussian cylinder here. This white cylinder is the Gaussian cylinder. Gaussian cylinder. Note that every point of the surface of the Gaussian surface is lying inside the meat of the metal. Metal, metal portion is this part is the metal portion okay material of the metal and every point of the surface is lying inside the meat of the metal so feel at every point is zero feel inside the metal is always zero so feel at every point of this gaussian surface is zero so flux is zero so flux through the gaussian surface is zero which implies q enclosed is zero from gauss law q enclosed is equal to zero remember gauss law is uh, flux through a closed surface is q enclosed divided by epsilon zero Q enclosure divided by epsilon 0. Okay. So now Q enclosed is 0. What is charge enclosed by this one? It is enclosing charge of the rod and charge on the inner surface of the rod. So I will call that Q inner and charge of the rod is Q rod. So Q enclosed is equal to Q inner plus Q rod is equal to 0. This means Q inner is equal to minus Q rod and Q rod, charge of the rod which was Q1 is plus 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 12. So this implies Q inner is equal to minus 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulombs. This is charge on the inner surface. Okay, This is charge on the inner surface. But we can also write it as minus Q1. It will help us for the outer surface. Now for the outer surface, we know total charge of the cylinder, which is uh, twice Q1, minus twice Q1. We know total charge of the cylinder, which is minus twice Q1. And that total charge of the cylinder is distributed on the inner surface and the, on the outer surface. So this would mean total charge of the cylinder is equal to charge on its inner surface plus charge on its outer surface okay charge on its inner surface plus charge on its outer surface or q cylinder is equal okay we already know q cylinder this is minus twice q1 is equal to q inner we just found is uh, i'll substitute minus q1 for it for a while minus q1 plus q outer Q1 will go to this side, will become plus minus twice Q1 plus Q1 is minus Q1 is equal to Q outer or Q outer is equal to minus Q1. Q1 is 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulombs. So this simply means half of the charge is on the inner surface and half of the charge is on the outer surface. That may not be always the case. Okay, that may not always be the case. It depends on the charge of this rod. If char I'll leave it for you. If charge of the rod is zero, then all the charge is, lies on the outer surface. 
चार्ज ऑफ द इनर सरफेस चार्ज ऑफ द इनर सरफेस इफ इट इज अ कंडक्टिंग सिलेंड्रिकल शेल चार्ज ऑफ द इनर सरफेस इज ऑलवेज 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 इक्वल एंड अपोजिट टू दैट ऑफ द रॉड इक्वल एंड अपोजिट क्यू इनर इज ऑलवेज माइनस क्यू रॉड इक्वल एंड अपोजिट टू दैट ऑफ वट एवर इज हेयर ऑलवेज इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ द टोटल चार्ज ऑफ द सिलेंडर सो दिस इज जस्ट अ कोइंसिडेंस दैट इन दिस केस टोटल चार्ज ऑफ द सिलेंडर इज इक्वली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ऑन द टू सरफेसिस दैट इज नॉट द केस ऑलवेज charge of the inner surface is always equal and opposite to that lying along the central axis and that of the outer surface will be decided from the total charge then okay so in this case it happens to be same on the equally distributed uh, between the inner and the outer surfaces fine i guess that was it uh, yes that's all with this problem okay that'll do for the session